people of YouTube. It is I, the Malik Aaron. Aaron, I'm going to get these, try to do these reviews, you know, relatively quickly. Because one, I have to do that 30 minute Iron Man match. Now it's going to be really tough. Not only that, Fastlane, the pay-per-view no one is excited about is going to be tomorrow. So I'm going to have to watch that, obviously. And doing all this will be tough, but I believe I will do it. It takes effort and time. Um, a lot of free time, really. But review time. Before that, uh, I didn't go to McKay's. I went to The Great Escape, which is similar to McKay's. It has a bunch of comic books, movies, games, CDs. It's nice. But I did get a game. It's a horror game, so it kind of goes with the theme of the review. But it's a rare horror game. A horror game that's basically been banned all across the world. Except the good old USA, of course. And I'm talking about Manhunt 2. I have the first Manhunt, which is also a very controversial game. I haven't played that too much. But, you know, it's, uh, it's alright for what it is. This is the sequel, the controversial sequel. I could not find this anywhere until today, which is kind of amazing. So yeah, I did. I've heard the game is very similar to the first. The graphics do look very outdated, but I don't think that matters. Because this is all about that blood and gore and violence. The things that caused it to get banned in the first place. And just look at that DVD. Well, not DVD. Uh, that game disc. See that blood smudge mark? That's not legit. It's part of the disc. Just saying. Yeah. Also, there's not going to be a Manhunt 3, so... I'm glad I at least got this. Yeah, that's Manhunt 2, the game I got. Anyway, review time. Real review. Halloween 2. I reviewed the first... Well, not the first. The remake. 2007 remake from Rob Zombie. Not too long ago. Actually, I think it was like... Last week. Man, time goes by fast. But yeah, this is the sequel to that movie. And... Well, I guess I'll just read to you this long, long... Two paragraphs of text. So, Rom Zombies H2, you know, for Halloween 2, I know, real smart. Picks up at the exact moment that 2007's box office smash. I mean, it did alright. Halloween stopped. It follows the aftermath of Michael Myers' murderous rampage through the eyes of heroine Laurie Schrode. If you don't know, Laurie is Michael Myers' you know, sister. And if you've seen the 2007 movie, you know Michael Myers killed his whole family, basically. Well, he didn't kill his mother. His mother committed suicide. But everyone else did. Except his little sister, of course. And his little sister, obviously, just a baby, got adopted by another family and became Lori. Her name's actually Angel. So yeah, there's some real symbol, symbolism. So that's a little backstory there. So evil has a new destiny. Michael Myers is back in this terrifying sequel to Rob Zombie's visionary reimagining of Halloween. Is that time of the year again? Yep, that time of the year to review terrible movies. Uh, and Michael Myers has returned home to sleepy Haytonfield, uh, Illinois, to take care of some unfinished family business, unleashing a trail of terror that only horror master Rob Zombie can. Yet calling Rob Zombie a horror master just just sounds like such an insult, you know? Guys, like, you know, uh, I mean, there's so many people that have made such better horror movies, like James Wan. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan, I mean, Jordan Peele, they are better at horror than this dude. So this dude is just all about, I mean, like, he does have a metal band, so that explains things. But it's just mainly about just blood and guts and grittiness, all that stuff. And that's, so yeah, it's weird. So, My Myers will stop at nothing to bring closure to the secrets of his twisted past. But the town's got an unlikely new hero. And if they... And if, man, I cannot talk. If they can only stay alive long enough to stop the unstoppable. 
So, last movie, Laurie shot Michael Myers in the face, point blank range, killed him dead. That's how it ended. This one starts off immediately after that. She has like a gun. She's on the streets. She sees a cop. And the cop is like, I'll help you out. They chase her to the hospital, you know, clean her up, stitch her rooms. Rooms? What are those? Uh, and Michael Myers is presumed dead. So she's in the hospital. You know, she's hurt, obviously. And Octavia Spencer, of all people, is in the hospital. I don't understand, but... You you never know what you expect with these movies. So yeah, she's there and she's gonna you know, help her out. You know, just be like a nurse. But Michael Myers turns out to be alive. And he's like chasing her throughout the hospital. She, Michael Myers stabs poor Octavia Spencer so many times. She did not deserve that. So uh, Michael Myers is going around trying to get Laurie. They have a little chase. A little chase. And then, like, after a bunch of stuff happens, he looks like he finally is about to get her. But then, turns out, it was all a dream. And that took up, like, 20-plus minutes of the movie. That one dream. But the question is, it's like, you kind of wonder, like, how much of the... Considering how the rest of the movie is, how much of a dream was it? How much was the dream and how much was reality? Because we all know, I mean, they're in the hospital, obviously. Who wouldn't be in the hospital? But how mu how long in the hospital? Because you, it's obvious, like, because after, like, they have, like, the scars and whatnot. So I don't know where the dream starts exactly. I guess when Michael Myers comes back to life, I presume. I don't know. So, I mean, I, uh, I guess. It's, it's confusing. So, Lori's now with her friend and the sheriff. They're living together. And, like, she's worried. Well, she, she soon realizes that, um, uh, she's, uh, Michael Myers, you know, sister. Before that, you know, the, do you know, the, the doctor, Malcolm McDowell, from the last movie, one of the only likable characters in the last movie. But guess what? Nope. He is the most egotistical jerk you will ever see in your life. He has such an ego problem. He treats everyone like garbage. He thinks he's so great. People are mad at him at his little new book for basically exploiting the victims and whatnot. And so, yeah. The, so, they did that. That's just such an unnecessary change. And it's also unbelievable considering how... He was in the last movie. He was a nice guy. He was like, all right. But he just flipped a switch. And now he's just acting like such an unlikable character. It's, it's honestly terrible. But you're probably asking, what's Michael Myers doing? Well, he's back to life, obviously. You know how these horror movies go. And he sees like his mom... Who is played by a Sherry Moon Zombie, obviously Rob Zombie's wife, who's clearly not in the movie just because he wanted her to be in the movie. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And she also has a white horse. And in the beginning of the movie, they put like a little disclaimer, a little text to explain what this white horse symbolizes. And I'm like, really? You think you're so sophisticated? You're gonna put text in the front of the movie about White Horse? Well, come on now. So, the rest of the movie is basically a psychological thriller. It's not much of a slasher. Michael Myers is going around. He doesn't even have his mask. He just looks like a hobo. It looks like part of the White family or the Duck Dynasty or something like that. He has a big old beard and whatnot. And he's, I guess he's just looking for Lori to complete the mission his, you know, for his mom. And, you know, Lori's just a wreck. She is just spewing curse words out her mouth, a bunch of F-bombs. She has lost it. She's lost her mind. And, uh, yeah, she has, like, these terrible friends who are terrible people to hang out with. And, like, after all this stuff, whole bunch of nothing. This movie's just a whole bunch of nothing, honestly. 
bunch of flashbacks and just nothing. She decides to you know, go get drunk with her friends and like they go out because it's Halloween night. And of course, she loses it. And then like after that, Michael Myers gets her and then Dr. Loomis, you know, the doctor, Malcolm McDowell, he's just like, I'm going to save her. And well, before that, Lori's friend dies and her father. I, I know if you've seen this movie, it's supposed to be a serious scene, but his reaction, his line delivery is so hilarious that I, I burst out laughing because it's just so <laughs> it's hard to even describe it it's just uh like wow I mean I come on <laughs> well basically it's reenacted he sees his daughter blood everywhere dead and she's like oh no Amy <laughs> so bad it's so funny at the same time. So that happens. And then in the end, spoiler alert, Michael Myers gets shot down, Dr. Loomis gets shot down, then Lori gets shot down. They all die. What a great way to end the movie. <laughs> in the end, the very end, it shows like Lori, she's like in like a mental hospital or something. And you got, you know, Michael Myers' ghost mom with her white horse. And apparently... Going to Rob Zombie, this is supposed to be like Lori in the afterlife, but who cares, <laughs> honestly. So what do I think of Halloween 2? It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible, terrible, terrible. I mean, when like interesting things happen, they're mostly just all right. Nothing satisfying. I mean, Michael Myers... But he doesn't really do much. He's not even Michael Myers. He's just like a dude. Like he has nothing that he does really nothing that makes him like the Michael Myers that became an icon, you know? Hopefully they bring that back in the new Halloween coming up, you know, this Halloween. All the characters are just so unlikable and just badly poorly written that I'm like, you can't root for anybody. Not even Michael Myers. <laughs> Uh, visually, it's very grungy. It just, it's not appealing to the eyes. Apparently, uh, this was intentional by Rob Zombie to get a more gritty looking look. It's supposed to be like, most cameras, I think he's supposed to like 35 milliliter, 35, uh, not milliliter, not millimeter. You know, like the stuff you film, like you put on camera. It's supposed to be like 35. It puts like 16. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it just looks bad. The effects don't look very good. Some of the, the plot is just terrible. And a whole lot of nothing happens, which makes everything worse. It's, it's just a bad movie. Overall, it's much worse than the 2007 version. At least that version had some stuff to it made it interesting so i'd give this three out of ten honestly it's it's not worth your money good thing i i spent cheap money on this i would never spend full price on a movie like this see so yeah, three out of ten not a good movie don't recommend it to anybody even if you are a hardcore fan of halloween still won't recommend it to any of you so yeah that's uh, Halloween 2 or H2. You know, as the marketing put it. So, next review will be a very depressing movie. Very sad. Quite the tragic ending. And it is from Clint Eastwood. I, I don't think I've done any of his movies. Because I don't have Gran Torino, I don't have American Sniper, don't have any of those. But I do have Million Dollar Baby. Yeah, that's the movie we're going to be reviewing. So if you like happy movies, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to be real disappointed. So come in the next review. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment. I will see you all next time. And I am out.